Okay, we are all set, ready to go, start building our 3D video mortise. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is launch into After Effects CC, and then from there we're gonna open up Cinema 4D Lite, in case you don't already have this open. If you do, bear with me for a second. Uh, we're just gonna go up to Composition, New Composition, HDTV 1080 2997 is fine. Go ahead and click OK. Then with the composition window selected, we're just going to go up to layer, new, Maxon Cinema 4D file, like I showed you before. And then let's just rename this video underscore mortis. Click save. Okay, and just like that, Cinema 4D light is open. So before we uh, go ahead and insert our geometry, uh, by default, Cinema 4D um, gives you a, a viewport of... 800 by 600, I think, and I, I just always like to uh, change it to 1920, 1080, and uh, because I'm always working at HD resolution. So, um, if we go ahead and click this Edit Render Settings button here, uh, it's going to open up uh, our render settings, and under Width, we're going to go ahead and change that to 1920, Height to 1080, or you can go into this Customs tab here, just like in After Effects and Photoshop, and change it that way. Uh, to HD TV 1080-2997 and go ahead and X out of that. Now you see that we have a full 1920-1080 HD viewport ready to work in. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and add our first piece of geometry, which is a cube. So if you go up here to this blue box and hover over it, you can see that it says add cube object. So go ahead and click that. And there we go. We have our first piece of geometry in our scene. So when we click the cube object, two things happen. It gets inserted into our viewport, which you can see. And then on the right hand side, you'll notice that there is our cube object as well in the objects tab. So basically anything that you add into your viewport here, whether it's uh, lights up here, cameras, more geometry, and so on, it's going to be added and stacked here in this objects tab, similar to Photoshop and After Effects and all your other programs there. And you can control various uh, properties here as well. So if you want to say hide this cube, you can go ahead and check mark here and uncheck it and it will hide it from your viewport is great. Okay, so moving down to the next box, you can see the object properties for the cube uh, that we created as long as that cube object is selected. So if I deselect it, you can see that the properties go away. And if I select it again, the properties uh, are back. This holds true for, you know, anything that you add into the scene, whether it's a camera or lights or anything. As long as uh, those objects are selected, the corresponding properties will show up down here in the Attributes Manager. So now what we want to do is basically resize this cube uh, to become uh, the size of our footage panel. Basically what we're going to create is maybe a concrete backing and then the footage is going to be in front of it, if you can kind of imagine that, um, just to give it kind of some, some style. So in order to resize our geometry, uh, down here in the objects properties uh, with the object selected, you can see uh, X, Y, and Z, similar to After Effects. Although when you start to resize in Z, you're actually going to see some depth rather than in After Effects, it's a 2.5D program, so you won't actually see that true 3D extrusion on Z. So let's go ahead and start resizing this. If you uh, go ahead and uh, under size X, if you uh, click and drag these arrows, actually do that for all of them, up and down, you're going to see uh, your, your cube objects start to resize and shape. Now a quick way to revert back to the default, which is uh, I think 200 centimeters, uh, anywhere there are these little arrows within uh, Cinema 4D, you can hover over it and right click on it, and it's going to revert back to the uh, original default values of the uh, program. So uh, for this particular exercise, what we want to do is resize this to 1920, 1080, so that when we insert uh, our footage, it's not stretched or distorted or anything. So it's easy. All we have to do is go in X and insert 1920, 
and then on Y, we want to do 1080. And we can leave uh, Z at 200 just to leave some depth to it. Also, you're going to notice uh, this grid here. And if it bothers you or distracts you or you want to turn it off, all you have to do is go up to Filter and Uncheck Grid. And you can uh, also go through uh, other options here if, uh, in case you want to turn things off. And just like that, we turned off our grid, which is also the uh, ground plane. And now we want to add some rounding to our uh, cube here or now it's a rectangle and in order to do that we want to go down back in the objects properties and go ahead and check this box here and you'll notice we ha now have like a, a slightly rounded edge to this cube and in order to see this better let's go up to display and change it from shading to shading lines all of a sudden you kind of see um, what, what we call subdivisions in 3D these are uh, subdivisions here that that uh, was made when we uh, rounded out our, our cube. And just so you kind of understand subdivisions, I'm going to go down here to uh, the subdivisions, which is 5, and let's change it to 2. Okay, so instead of 5 subdivisions around, we're only getting 2, and you can see that it's uh, we're kind of getting this hard edge it's not as smooth uh, so basically by decreasing the subdivisions you're you're basically decreasing the uh, amount of detail in your object um, you may be asking why don't we just crank it up in every situation well we can you see it starts to get black because there's so much information the more subdivisions you have the more detailed your objects uh, get which in turn slows down your program and your workflow. So you want to kind of find a, um, a happy medium here that, that works best for you. So uh, for this particular project, I found that five on the radius and five on the subdivisions gives us a nice clean look. Now we need to create a footage panel, which we can later apply actual moving footage to in After Effects. And an easy way to do this is simply click on your cube object here, control, click, and just drag it up. So you're going to see, before you let go, you're going to see this uh, horizontal arrow here. This means basically when you let go, it's going to create uh, an exact duplicate of this object. If you hover over this object, or if you have other objects in your uh, scene as well, and you kind of hover over an object, you're going to see the arrow turn down which is basically going to uh, make it a child of that object. Um, and it's similar to After Effects when you use the Pick Whip tool or parent anything to an object. So I'm going to make sure it's a horizontal arrow and go ahead and drop it. And now we have uh, this cube duplicated. So this is going to be a flat plane, which we're later going to uh, replace with composited footage in After Effects. So we don't need any rounding, so we're going to go ahead and uncheck that. And um, we don't need any depth on Z, so we can go ahead and change that to zero. Um, now let's go ahead and change views. We want to uh, be in the top view. So again, in order to do that, click on your uh, scroll wheel over the window that you want to change. And there you go. So hopping over to the top view with uh, this new cube selected, we're going to go ahead and click and drag on this blue arrow here, which is uh, your Z, and it's the same as in After Effects again. So let's go ahead and click and drag it to the front of this cube. Basically what we're doing is aligning the footage in front of this concrete backing that we, we created here. Also notice that when we move this in the top view, you can see it also updating in the perspective view, the right view, the front view, all these windows. So um, you have a lot of control over where you're moving things. And also if you need to get even more detailed as you're moving, um, when you have uh, your window selected, you can go ahead and press S and it's going to automatically zoom in on the object selected, which is a really great feature. So you can get very detailed. Okay, good. So now what we want to do is um, start to build the structure on both sides of this video mortise. 
So in order to do that, we're going to uh, start by, instead of adding a cube, we're going to add a cylinder. And you can see it drops it right in the uh, center of our viewport. Let's go ahead and change the radius to 13 and the height to 1080, which is the same height as our video mortise. And in the top view, I'm going to just zoom in a little bit and kind of bring this right over to the edge. Okay, that's going to be one pole. Now, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this cylinder. And I did that again by uh, holding control, clicking up, and dragging that into place. I'm going to move this over, duplicate this again. And now I want my height to be about 215. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to about here. And uh, now I want to rotate this about 40 degrees. And we haven't rotated yet, so there's two ways to do this, or probably more, but uh, I'm going to show you two ways. Uh, you can go up here, and instead of uh, your move tool, you have your scale tool, and then you also have your rotate tool. Another way to do that also is by pressing R on the keyboard. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go ahead and rotate this about 40 degrees. And uh, you can hold shift down and it's going to kind of snap to a multiple of 10. And then let's just kind of drag this into place here. Hopefully you can kind of start to see what I'm doing here. Maybe not. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, let me uh, duplicate this again. And I'm going to level this back out. I think 50 should work. And then uh, I'm going to resize it. Um, and another way to resize rather than by going into our height is uh, you can go ahead and click this little dot here. And that's also a nice little shortcut to resize. And you can also see over here my height's changing as I'm doing that, uh, which indicates it's doing the same thing, which is uh, great. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to the bottom here. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again, bring it up. And now hopefully you're starting to see just what I'm doing here. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven objects in our objects tab. And that's getting a little bit messy for me. Um, if you know me, I like to be organized. So uh, we have our pole. Let's go ahead and rename this now um, really quick. To rename, you just go ahead and double click on it. So I'm going to name this, let's say, just backing. And then this uh, is going to be our footage. And I'm going to go ahead and name this, let's say, pole underscore one, pole underscore two. And we can just leave these uh, for now. Okay, so a new thing that we're going to do is go ahead and select all three of these. What I want to do is group, uh, start grouping these objects together. So by uh, holding down shift and, and just clicking and dragging up, and then go ahead and hit option G, we just kind of grouped uh, these three objects into a null. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And then uh, under objects, you can also go to group. Does the same thing. I'm a fan of the shortcuts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, now, the beauty of grouping things is that it actually saves you a ton of time. Uh, not only uh, keeping you organized, but it does save you a lot of time, which is great. So. Um, now that this is grouped, what I can do is go ahead and duplicate this group and bring this up. Now there is a cylinder in there that I don't want. It's kind of doubling up, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But now you can see that if I continue to just duplicate this, maybe I'll switch my view. Hopefully now you can start to see this come together. I'm just going to do it all the way until we reach the top. 
hopefully my math was right, and I will, yep, I'll hit the top. Perfect. Just about. All right, so now we have one side, and you probably guess I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. Actually, I'm going to select the pole all the way up to null 5. Group all that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and duplicate this group now. And let's go to our top view. Drag this all the way to the back. Boom. Duplicate this again. Rotate it. R on the short uh, on the keyboard for a shortcut. Rotate 90 degrees. Drag this right around here. Duplicate again. Drag over. That's pretty sweet. Looks pretty solid. Now, if uh, you guessed, I'm going to go ahead and select all of this and group it again. Rename this Truss Right. Awesome. That's looking really good. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see the um, power with the group tool, not only, again, if you're uh, crazy organized like me, um, but it really does help you when you're duplicating objects and uh, you know trying to make a complex scene. It's great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this back onto shading instead of shading lines so I can kind of see a, a cleaner view. And uh, go ahead and select Truss Right, duplicate this, and in the top view, you probably guessed right, we're just going to go ahead and drag this over. Perfect. Just rename this, Truss Left. Okay, the last thing I want to do here is uh, we're just going to make kind of like a lip, almost like a you see on a billboard or something. So an easy way to do that instead of uh, dropping in another cube and you know reshaping it and everything, I'm gonna just go ahead and duplicate this backing since it's you know the same size and everything. And now that new shortcut I showed you, we can just kind of click and drag this down. We can do the same to make it a little bit longer that way. And let me go into uh, the top view just to line this up to the back. Go into the front view to drop it down. And hopefully you can see uh, kind of, you know, the same way you do this in After Effects, you use the different views. Um, it's really helpful in 3D to use these different views to uh, kind of make everything a little bit more exact. And there we go, we have a lip on the bottom of our video mortise. Just a little bit extra detail. You can uh, go ahead and make this as detailed as you want. Again, I don't want to waste your time uh, adding, you know, a ton of detail. I'm just trying to show you initially, um, you know, how we can make something simple, kind of cool and useful down the road that you can, again, um, hopefully use in your future projects. So just like anything else, there's a, a ton of different ways to do one thing. Um, here, instead of continuously duplicating everything, that can become a little bit tedious. And if you want to upgrade your Cinema 4D Lite application to Broadcast or Studio Edition, which comes with uh, the awesome feature of MoGraph, which is uh, pretty much duplicating and uh, and doing all of this work for you in the click of a few buttons, which is great. So thank you for following along and in the next video we're going to add some uh, shiny materials to our video mortise, we're going to light our scene and add a camera. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you then, thanks.